Hey, what's going on everybody? I figured I'd throw out a quick video to just see how everybody's doing. I um, figured I'd do a little reloading. Heard a lot about some ammo shortages out there, but uh, you know, um, being in the reloading game, I, I don't really, not really affected by that. Um, tend to stock up on pieces and parts, uh, so I have enough to get me through times like this. But you know, kind of puts the question out there, are you one of those folks that uh, stockpile? You know, when you find a sale, do you just go out and and uh, buy tons and tons of ammo and, and put it in the safe or, or wherever and, and just keep it on hand and you know as you go out and shoot for range days pull it out and uh, you always have ammo with you <coughs> are you uh, more like myself and uh, just buy the pieces and parts so uh, um, when you you know time comes to go out to the range you just uh, put it together or you know pre-build them either way I know there's an argument for either side you know both of them are, are kind of pre-planning or situations like we're in now, um, you know, the longer you wait, you know, the only difference is um, the ammo that you're limited to by bulk in. Sometimes you have to go with maybe a lesser quality ammo, maybe not your favorite an ammo. Um, you know, at least with reloading, you know, I know that at least the pieces and parts that I get, and some, you know, you know, there's also an argument there that that some of those pieces and parts couldn't be available uh, at the time. Also, you know, at, at some point. You know, you have to make that decision of, you know, how are you going to get yourself through situations like we're in? Uh, to where there's, you know, uh, ammo's hard to find, especially 9mm. I hear it's really hard to find. So, you know, what are you? Are you a stockpiler? You're a reloader? Um, I made a video a long time ago that uh, kind of went through the cost comparison to, you know, to, to help people understand that, you know, you do save money doing it, but it does involve a little bit of time. Last week, my son in law came over. It was interesting. And uh, I had none made up. I just had some in stock. So um, he's like, let's go shoot. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to run by the store and grab, you know, a hundred or something like that. And then we'll go out to my range out the door and shoot. So we ended up going to the store. Nothing. Went to another store. Nothing. So it really kind of reminded me, you know, why we do what we do. You know, either one of those stockpiling people or one of the reloading people. So we came back to the house. Like, you know. Give me 30 minutes. So 30 minutes later, you know, I went out and pounded about 100 of them out. So we went out and had a nice range day. But, you know, it always keeps it in the back of your head. You know, you have to do something uh, when this happens, you know, when there's a shortage. So, you know, no matter what your plan is to whether it's going to be the person that, that uh, buys the pieces and parts, uh, which, you know, in situations when ammo becomes scarce, um, you know, sometimes the pieces and parts, they are still available. Uh, you know, those don't quite go out as fast as the, the already assembled uh, 9mm. So, you know, there's, there's benefits there uh, because it's a smaller audience that, uh, you know, possibly smaller audience that it, that it pertains to. But, uh, you know, whatever your plan is, you, you need to have one. And, you know, right now it's kind of late to, uh, to join the purchasing and, and bulk stockpiling up, you know, unless you can, you know, find some place on the Internet and set up some notifications and stuff when it becomes available. But uh, something we have to keep in the back of our head that, uh, you know, you need to, need to have a plan. But, uh, you know, since I'm sitting around the, the reloader, I have a little discussion of, of currently what I'm using. So, got me a pile of miscellaneous brass. This brass came from the last time I went to the range, and I had a good friend that, uh, that supplied me with, with a small trash bag full of uh, brass that he picked up. So I cleaned all those, uh, put them through a uh, brass cleaner, put them through my tumbler. So I got them all nice and clean. Um, I got some nice 124 Rainier. In fact, yeah, it was Rainier that I purchased. So 124 Rainiers. Uh, I really like the 124 grain. Uh, I just like the heavier bullet. And then um, I have Universal. It was Universal Clay, but now it's Universal. I use uh, 4.5 grains of that. Uh, and then I have CCI primers. Sometimes uh, I have to get the Winchester. Uh, when they run out, but uh, or the Magtech, but uh, right now use the uh, small pistol primers. This is what you use for nine millimeter. Uh, when you reload 45, you have to go to the large pistol primer, and when you do like two to three, you have to go to the small rifle primer. So there are different kinds of primers that you need for each one of these uh, assemblies. So you know, really, you can sit around and talk about it. So. I make sure the bottom's clean. This first downstroke, what it does is this, if there's a primer in it, it deprimes it. So 
I push down, get any kind of old primer out, but since I washed them, primer is already out. I grab me a new primer. Now this does have a feeder on it, but uh, this thing's probably about 10 years old, so the feeder is getting a little, little wonky, so I just kind of put it in by hand. I put a brand new primer in, and of course you put, uh, th there's an open side, uh, ignition side that goes up. On the downstroke, this is where it seats the primer uh, into the casing. The upstroke now, we're dropping the grain in. I have this little light here so I can look in and actually see how much it's dropping. And I grab me a bullet, pop it on top, and uh, this is already preset, so when I push this down, this will set it to a 1.125 overall length. And then it'll take me to the next stage. And this is a crimp. I get this preset uh, to do a light crimping on it. There's some people that do a little harder crimping, but I just put a light crimping on it. You know, and if you ever have any problems to where um, maybe you're not sure if there's something in there, or maybe uh, something happened when you loaded this that you have a problem, uh, they have one of these tools. And uh, what this does is you actually put the bullet inside of this and tighten it down and you hit it like a hammer and what it does is it disengages the projectile so you can render it where it's not a problem and you'll just have the primer in the shell. So you can actually save the top piece and, you know, so it's a good thing to have. One of those, one of those tools that uh, if you do start reloading, it, it's great to have a bullet puller. But, uh, yeah, I uh, figured I just haven't uploaded a video in a while. But again, takes any kind of old primer out. And once you set these up, I mean, you know, I can I can go through this and you like it's not an issue. Just going through stages, you know, I can watch a movie, listen to music, something like that. But uh, you know, th there, it takes a little bit of time and setup to get to this point where you can just go through the stages. Um, when you buy uh, your press, it comes with documentation that says, you know, when you set these, you put this all the way up and you make sure there's X amount of space in between them. And it shows you how to set up each one of the, um, you know, each one of the die uh, pieces for the single stages. Or it's a little more elaborate if you go with the, the progressive stages, which one of these days I, I might uh, end up getting. Right now, it's just kind of a fun hobby. I don't shoot enough to where I think I could justify uh, a really nice progressive stage, you know, just kind of get it on a single stage. And, you know, as I've mentioned in previous videos before, eh, I can do, I'm getting where I can do over maybe 125 in an hour, but, but I'm not rushing, uh, trying to go through, like I said, I got my light, I want to make sure I don't get any squibs or, or any issues like that, and that each one of them are loaded properly. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't see a huge need for, for in myself, uh, a progressive, but I know there's a lot of people out there that do use them and enjoy them quite a bit. Like I said, maybe one day in the future I will, but uh, for now, <laughs> this, this little guy does does quite well. It's an old Lee turret uh, four-stage press, which, uh, like I said, I got a long time ago from a, a person that I was working with. So, yeah, really, this was just a quick video uh, to reach out and say, hey, um, uh, I'll probably, you know, put another couple hundred uh, in the safe. It's, uh, you know, so I don't get caught uh, next time we want to go shooting outside uh, with no ammo, that was kind of embarrassing, especially when you're a reloader. You know, he assumes that I just I have it on hand, which you know sometimes unfortunately I have to go make some up real quick. So I fall a little bit behind, but uh, uh, it happens. So it was nice that I kind of got myself a lesson taught too, going to the store thinking that I would actually see some there. But uh, hopefully everybody you know has their method and their methods working for them, so you still get to enjoy some range time uh, during these times, of course, of the shortages. So, everybody take care, shoot straight, talk to you later, bye.